Today's the 13th of January 2019. I had said to myself I wasn't going to start any more project, projects. Um, but it didn't last very long because I'm a bit bored already. So I think I will. And what I'm planning to do is to make a freelance steam tram. And uh, I've dug out some odd bits of uh, metal from the metal stocks. And the plan is to make a spirit fired vertical boilered uh, tram with a vertically mounted twin cylinder double acting oscillating engine so that's what we're gonna do the plan is that by the end of the project the steam tram will look something like uh, the two pictures I'm using a slitting saw mounted in a homemade arbour to cut up a block of brass to make the, uh, the two cylinders for the oscillating engine as well as the, uh, the central standard on which the cylinders will attach. The rotational speed of the slitting saw is a little bit high as you can tell by the screaming noise, but we get there. Well, in spite of all the screaming and the noise, piece of brass is cut off and actually doesn't look half bad so there won't be too much work to do on the mill to true it all up I prepared two pieces of brass um, this piece will form the uh, the standard for the twin cylinders of the oscillating engine and the plan here is that this piece of brass will actually be the basis of the two cylinders uh, it'll be cut in half ultimately and each cylinder will be uh, approximately an inch long and the bore um, of the cylinders will be 11 30 seconds of an inch odd dimension but the reality is I seem to have a bag full of 11 30 seconds o-rings don't know why but I have so I intend to use a couple of them I mean this it wouldn't really matter if this uh, this cylinder was anywhere I think between 5 16 and 3 8 anywhere in that range will be perfectly adequate for what this uh, little engine's got to do I've got a bit of brass which will form the two cylinders, uh, just uh, roughly chucked. Got a few bits of protection shim under it just to protect the brass. And I've got my very gash homemade uh, wiggler set up. Um, and of course the idea is that um, when the end of the pointer is dead in line with the, uh, the live centre here, the hole, the indicated hole, must be absolutely uh, central and where we want it to be. To be to uh, to drill. I don't think my arms are probably in the way. Uh, where we want to drill the hole, so you just keep fiddling about. It doesn't take a second. Just showing this wiggler set up in a bit more detail. The short end of the pointer is in the dot mark on the bit of brass that I'm going to drill and as you can see there is a marginal amount of run out at the far end where the pointer lines up with the live centre. The live centre is only there for the purposes of just determining where the end should be but the reality is with the magnification of 
the wiggler from one end to the other, that, that dot mark is running within a fraction of a thou, which is perfectly good enough for what I'm doing. Right, just run a 5 sixteenths drill through just to get the, uh, the bore started and then I'll finish off with an 11 30 second drill for the final side. I know the purists would say you ought to ream this or something and I'm sure they're right but uh, I ain't got an 11 30 second reamer I'm not prepared to waste time making one so uh, this is how it'll be. I'm sure it will be accurate enough for uh, an oscillating engine. If the ball was any bigger I'd probably run a boring tool for it, but um, I don't think that's necessary really. I'm not going to spend all day on this. The second thing I've got is a, an indexing plate, which in this case is actually a broken 62 gear change wheel from the lathe. I didn't break it, I bought it in a box of scrap and simply uh, put a boss on it and glued the two halves together. I wouldn't use it as a change wheel anymore but it's certainly handy for a indexing and I've actually just marked, I think it comes out, four points at 90 degrees uh, against the teeth so that if that's indexed they will be at 90 degrees to enable me to drill these holes. And the way I'm going to do that, I've got this homemade uh, sort of drilling attachment which fits to the lathe cross slide. That's the first part. The other thing I've got, and I made this donkeys years ago, is a small detente spindle which just bolts on the back of the uh, belt cover to the lathe. This method would not be very good if you were trying to make pinions for watches or anything precise but for what I'm about to do frankly I've always found it over many many years to be perfectly satisfactory for drilling holes in covers. The detente is now swivelled and locked down into the 60 tooth gear wheel against a dot punch mark and there are four of those equally spaced, so if the detente is lined up with each mark uh, as uh, you release it and rotate, then the spindle is rotated by 90 degrees each time. The cross slide has now been moved and locked so that the uh, tip of the centre drill, this is actually a new one, is where I think I want it in what will be the, uh, the face of the cover and the centre drill will be driven by one of my trusty cheapo battery drills. Okay, I've uh, used the arrangement to drill out four holes all to the same depth in the end of the, uh, the bar stock and uh, we'll proceed to uh, part off the uh, the covers. So if we're very lucky, and we may not be, we've got four covers, two with holes in the middle for the uh, piston rods that will do the business on the two cylinders for the oscillating engine. I've prepared a couple of piston rods out of one eighth diameter stainless, 35 BA each end about um, just over 3 sixteenths at one end, that will be for the small end and something like um, 5 sixteenths, 5 thirty seconds rather at the other end, slightly shorter, which will screw into each piston. So what I'm doing is to uh, try and tap 10 BA M covers of the cylinder block. So I'm using the transfer punches. I put one screw in already and I'm using transfer punches to just mark where the other 10 BA holes have got to go. Um, 
like that. And I'm going to drill tapping size for 10BA, which is number 54. So we'll drill them about 5mm deep in the end cover and then uh, tap. I've already fitted the piston on the end of the piston rod, um, so just to keep things slightly more central, in case there's any errors. Just put the piston in the ball, and some Timbia brass screws, use my fat fingers, and uh, There we go, screw the end cover on. Probably a slightly expensive way of doing this with all these 10 BA brass screws, but as I think there's loads of them, might as well use them up. I um, haven't fitted the O-rings to the piston yet because they've got to come out again, but um, Everything seems to move freely, and when the O-rings are in, the pistons hopefully will seal quite nicely. I'm going to make two cranks um, for the crankshaft. So it's a bit of three-quarter inch stainless steel. Now I'm going to set the drill and tap that 5BA, and then from the middle, uh, using the lathe, I've marked out a quarter of an inch from the centre to there and put a dot punch in, dot mark, um, because then the total crank throw will be half inch, which I think will suit the cylinders I've made. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, back in a bit of an exaggeration to call this a tapping machine, but anyway, back in the setup to tap. A hole for a quarter inch throw. I've started to get the bones of this um, oscillating engine put together. Got two cylinders, uh, the bones of the crankshaft, and the standard. I think the next decision is uh, how I'm going to transmit the drive from it to the tram. Well, as usual, I'm just following my nose and haven't thought anything through, as you would expect. The main shaft of the motor is uh, 3 sixteenths in diameter, which instinctively feels about right. So I think, initially, the first set of gears will be these two. Um, I haven't worked out what ratio it is at the moment, but anyway. Um, three to two or something, I don't know. Uh, but one of the tasks is going to have to be to silver solder some larger bosses to the gears because if I drilled these uh, bosses out for three sixteenths there won't be anything like enough uh, thickness left to tap for a, uh, a grub screw to fix it to the shaft. Sorry about the noise of the milling machine. I'm using a one and a half millimetre diameter end mill to mill the um, semicircular slots in the reverser block for the, uh, the engine. It's times like this and the rotary table uh, comes into its own. Another thing that I get a great deal of use out of, but when you need it, you need it.
I expect everybody knows how to do this, but uh, just in case, if you're going to make a little oscillating engine, the thing to do is to make a little jig. This point is the pivot of the cylinder. These two holes, fairly carefully marked out, represent the port holes in the cylinder. And uh, this hole here represents the, uh, the centre line of the crankshaft. So if you've made the jig fairly well, it doesn't have to be desperate, um, and you make the jig as wide as the cylinder that you're intending to, uh, to drill, if you place the jig over the pivot of the cylinder, I'm just using a bolt for demonstration purposes, um, and clamp it all together, parallel, and then drill the two holes, um, that's where your ports into the cylinder are going to go. I've done all this, so I'm, I'm only sort of showing you what I did. Um, so those are the two ports. What you then have to do is to transfer the port drilling, drillings to the standard for your oscillator. And I say I've already done them, but... Um, so that's the pivot. There are the two port holes, inlet and outlet. Oh, sorry. In, in, inlets because it's a double acting uh, oscillator and that's the centre line of your crankshaft so if you place your jig through the centre point and if the jig is then rotated by the correct angle you can then drill through to, uh, to drill the two ports and the way to make sure you get the angle right if you take your crankshaft and I've actually screwed it on uh, backwards at the moment because that's how I need to do it but if you take your crankshaft put it put it in its uh, bearing like that fairly good fit and then place the jig through the uh, the crank, that angle must be correct for drilling the two ports. So if you now drill through this hole and this hole, that's one set of ports. And if you go the other way, oh, this is rather easier to do than to explain. Really. Um, you go the other way. And then drill the other two holes. They're the other two ports. And if you get it all correct, what you end up with is uh, this is a double acting, so you need uh, ports at both ends of the cylinder. But if you get it all correct, then you end up with the two ports at each end in the correct place um, to be fully open when the uh, the crank is in its 90 degree position. Uh, it's really easy and it saves a lot of complicated marking out. Really. Okay, we have some life. Fantastic, it is all compressed air, but at least the thing is going around. So, I think this is the end of stage one of the steam tram. We have a motor.
extremely difficult to hold this lot while filming this. So, do I make a start on building the boiler for this tram? Or shall I build a chassis on which to mount that twin cylinder oscillating engine? Decisions, decisions. Watch this space. If you got this far, thank you very much for watching. And uh, please press the subscribe button to my channel if you'd like to see more of the uh, nonsense I get up to. Many thanks.